have a hypothesis. Maybe since the mountain gets taller and taller, the trees and bushes do too. So the trees way up at the timber line must be really, really tall. A line of trees and no more trees above it. This must be the tree line. The tree line. Exactly right, kids. We've officially reached the tree line. Do you notice anything about the area? I do. There's no plants except these scraggly little shrubs. That's true, Tank. They are little and scraggly. Anybody think they know why? Maybe the reason trees can't grow tall is because that's how things grow way up high on a mountain, where it's so cold and windy. You are exactly right, buddy. The different weather at high mountain altitudes makes things grow differently. Yay, buddy, your hypothesis was true. La la la. So, are those the... Yes, the ones that look like they're dripping down from the ceiling? Those are stalactites. And these are stalagmites. Remember, never touch them. We just leave them be. It's the first lesson of caving. Stalactites and stalagmites. Those are such great words. I'm going to have a hard time remembering which is which, though. You know, I used to have the same problem, but now I use a trick. I just remember that a stalactite holds tight to the ceiling. Stalactite? I get it, but where do they come from? How were they made? I have a hypothesis. I think that whatever makes a stalactite is the same thing that makes a stalagmite. <laughs> An excellent hypothesis, buddy. See, they are both made by water. They're made by water? Yes. As water drips from the ceiling, it evaporates and leaves behind tiny bits of minerals. Over time, these bits of minerals grow into a stalactite. They kind of remind me of icicles. And that's right. You can think of them as icicles made of rock. But what makes the stalagmites? The same thing. Water? The water droplets drip down from the stalactites and leave minerals where they land, causing stalagmites to grow up from the floor. I'm awake. I was just resting my eyes. Huh? Wait, is it raining? <laughs> Time to play hot and cold. We're at the North Pole. Cold. Cold. Okay, my turn. Now we're next to a hot volcano. <gasps> such thing as a cold desert? How do you know? There might be. Maybe some deserts are colder than others, Shiny. Who knows? Well, I do remember the conductor once mentioning something about different kinds of deserts. <laughs> or was it desserts? Ah, no, uh, deserts. But nothing really happens in a desert, and hardly anyone lives there. And aren't all deserts always hot? John and I have a hypothesis. Maybe deserts are colder at night. Hey, wouldn't it be cool to find out what happens in a desert at night? Not cool, hot. I'd go visit a desert, but we'd probably sweat a lot. But it'll be an adventure. A hot, sweaty desert adventure. So what's the surprise, Frankie? <sighs> hey, it's kind of cool out now. Frankie, can you please show us the surprise before it gets any colder? Huddle up, huddle up. It's pretty cold now. Wow. Yeah. Is this even the same desert? Surprise, surprise! It's cold! How could this have ha ha happened? Well, after the sun goes down, the desert remains warm for a little while, but then BAM! Comes really cold. Sometimes very cold. And get this, there are even some deserts that are always cold. I know, sounds nutty, but it's true. I am co cold, so cold. Dad, can we go someplace war warmer? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, kids, maybe we should get back to the dinosaur train, huh? Yeah, good, good idea. idea. Well, Frankie, uh, thanks for the tour. Your desert is am amazing. It's so beautiful and so crowded. I love your holes and the burrows and tun tunnels. Yeah, this place is cool, huh? I mean, hot. I mean, cold. <laughs> you know where I'm going with it. There were no dinosaurs before the Triassic time period. Dimetrodon belonged to an animal group called synapsids, which includes the ancestors of all mammals. I have a hypothesis.
hypothesis. Maybe Dimetrodon used its fin for showing off. Good thinking, buddy. It's likely that it used its sail fin to show off, just like how theropods use their crests. Or Dimetrodon may have also used its fin to control its body temperature. Was Dimetrodon a herbivore? Dimetrodon was a carnivore, and very likely one of the top carnivores in its ecosystem. Dion, I really like to compare features. Would you mind if we do a feature check? Check away. Hmm, you have four legs and an amazing sail fin. Yup, it helps me cool off. Buddy, I guess your hypothesis was wrong. It's not for showing off, it's for cooling off. It is hot here, isn't it? And I see you walk close to the ground. True, puts me closer to the food. I'm a carnivore, too. I'm going to grow up to be big. Really big. One of the biggest dinosaurs ever. <laughs> I didn't come out of an egg. Polycodalus babies are born live in the water from the mums. Oh, my. Really? Wow. What other features do polycodalus have? Well, I've only been out in the world for a day now, but I've noticed I move really easily through the water. You do move easily through the water. And I notice that you and your mom both have a long head, a short neck, and flippers. I have a hypothesis. I bet each part of your body is made to help you swim through the water. You're right, buddy. And since we migrate through the water, we have to be ship-shaped swimmers. So you do migrate to follow the food, like T-Rexes do? Yep, just like T-Rexes, only instead of hunting for meat, we ship out season after season to follow the yummiest fish in the briny deep. Things falling like seeds, and they're making little shallow holes where they land. I like holes, but I don't like things falling on me from out of nowhere. They're falling from the trees. They're not falling from the sky, Don. Or outer space. <laughs> outer space? Nothing could ever fall from that far away, buddy. I have a hypothesis. If something did fall all that way from outer space, it would make a huge hole. But things from outer space just don't fall on the Earth, do they? Probably not. Let's see this. Rock wall! What a crater! Okay, let's see what everyone's... <gasps> Leap and Lambiosaurus! Look at the size of that thing! Whoa, I am glad we came to see this, Mr. Conductor! It's bigger than I ever would have imagined! That came from an asteroid? Yeah, a huge one, right? Well, I have a hypothesis! Just like Buddy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The asteroid that made this crater was probably not much bigger than this Zeppelin, but since asteroids fly for a very long time and are coming in at a very fast speed, well, when one does hit the Earth, it hits hard and forms a very deep hole. Can we get a closer look? <laughs> Let's take her down, Mr. Conductor. Care to take the wheel, Mr. Tyrannodon? Oh, yeah. Whoa! 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 Yeah! <laughs> Mr. Conductor, what happened to the asteroid that made the crater? What an excellent question, buddy. When the asteroid hit, it vaporized into small pieces. And sometimes we can find pieces of the actual asteroid inside a crater. You mean bits of asteroid from outer space? Indeed, he do, Don. What do these space rocks look like? Well, sometimes they're shiny. Shiny? Maybe we can find some. Yeah. Dinosaur once train. upon a time there was a mom Her name was Mrs. Pteranodon Sitting on her nest she heard a scratching and said Oh boy my eggs are hatching One by one her kids popped